All right, so uh, here's the deal. Uh, we are at the Gettysburg Museum of History. I've got no fancy intro. Uh, I've got no flowery words or, or anything like that. All I'm going to say is that we're going to be looking at a grouping today from the 45th Infantry Division in World War II that is unlike anything that I have ever seen. Uh, really one of the most amazing groupings that, that you will ever come across. talk to you today about an American hero, an American hero that you've probably never heard about. His name is George Spahn, and he, he was in the uh, 40th Combat Engineers, he was attached to the 45th Division, and he received the Distinguished Service Cross for action in the invasion of Sicily. And this group came to the museum through a family member who wanted to do something with it. Um, it had been put away at this family member's grandmother's house for several decades because um, Spawn died when he was fairly young and I, I believe it was in the 1970s. So this was all put away at a family member's house and um, unfortunately some of it was kept in a footlocker in the basement so some of the items, some of the war trophy items didn't fare so well. But um, it, it's really an incredible grouping and it's really incredible that it stayed together this long because a lot of times when someone dies you know early um, you know and family members have it put away for decades on end it gets either sold or thrown away or unfortunately um, so, so this family member contacted the museum and they started telling me about this grouping and um, sent me a few photos and I said we'd be very interested in, in, in this grouping so uh, they came here we talked um, they decided that they thought this would be a good fit and we were able to obtain the grouping, and, and it is spectacular. I mean, there's so much here, there's so much history that has stayed together. I was, I was just blown away, and, and I mean, one of the, the, the interesting, just a quick background, he, he was originally an enlisted man, and he went to officer's candidate school through the engineer program. He, he was an engineer in civilian life. So um, he, he proudly wore the Good Conduct Medal, which was for enlisted men, uh, side by side with his Distinguished Service Cross ribbon, which I just think is so cool. Um, you know, it's very interesting. You don't see that a whole lot. Um, usually Distinguished Service Crosses went to um, officers. I mean, they did go to enlisted guys, but it's unusual to see such a small amount of ribbons like that, you usually see these big ribbon racks with distinguished service crosses. I just think it's a really cool statement. But in this grouping also was his helmet. And um, most servicemen in World War II were not able to give their or were not able to bring their helmets home. But for whatever reason, he did bring his home. And and it's a true World War II configuration helmet with the uh, painted symbol for for the 40th Com Combat Engineers right here, which which is just amazing. And, and the liner is still intact. There's no strap for whatever reason. Maybe he took them off because this, this net is on here and it has been on here for, uh, forever. I mean, it is sticky, it is dirty, it is just salty as we like to say. But it's an amazing World War II painted helmet that's 100% right just the way it, it came here. Um, and also we have his 1911. We have a lot of war trophies, such as this P-38 right here. A lot of German war trophies. Now, like I said, the German war trophies were in a footlocker. They were kept in the basement, so they're not in the best of condition. In, in that, in that, um, that uh, footlocker, there's also a whole bunch of other guns, pistols, like this. Um, there's a whole bunch of revolvers and, and different pistols that were more like civilian weapons or some flags. I really like this ball. This, this is a ball. There's also his mitt was in there. And we have all this stuff. I just didn't bring everything out. But this ball has signatures all over it from some of his men. Now, they played with this ball. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not in perfect condition. And it's really hard to read the names. And then we got a German um, gas mask here. And it's still in, in its case. And I'm going to get that out you know, and, and just, th there's, there's just all kinds of other stuff. There's souvenir items that he must have gotten in Italy. 
um, just all kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of insignia and, and everything. We have this uniform too, but that's put away. Um, it's a four pocket uniform. And it's the one in this picture right here from his wedding day. Um, that's his bride. Um, but what an amazing grouping and, and just there's so much history here and there's a whole binder full of um, documents and photos um, that we'll go over in a, in a little bit. As Eric mentioned, uh, there is just a crazy amount of documents that came with this grouping. Apparently, George Spawn was one of those guys who never threw anything away, and we are quite fortunate because there's an amazing historical record that comes with this grouping. Uh, so here is Spawn's officer ID card. And then in this binder, it's just amazing everything that's in here. So this is a newspaper clipping uh, from his hometown that, that talks about him being awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. And as you're reading it, it's, it's kind of interesting. It says, while in school, Spawn was active in many uh, fields and took part in three sports uh, at Hartfield High. Look at this. He was captain of the Hatfield High School uh, baseball team, captain of the soccer team, and a member of the basketball team. So he's captain of two sports teams. So, so we have some leadership qualities uh, with, with this man uh, even before he goes off to war. And then here uh, is a really nice photo of him. You can see his engineer insignia here on his uniform. There's a photo with some of his buddies. Now I'm going to skip ahead because this is something that, that I just really, really found fascinating. So originally, Spawn's actions... Uh, he got him recommended for a silver star, and, and if you look, the way that they wrote these up is just really interesting. So here we have the, the rank, uh, Second Lieutenant George S. Spawn, uh, and to be awarded the silver star, he's in Company B of the 40th Engineer Combat Regiment, uh, and then it goes on to talk about uh, what actions he performed that, that warranted him being uh, given this award. But, but look at here. This is what I really kind of found fascinating with this document. They, they want details uh, about the action. So here, nature of the terrain. Terrain was rocky. Uh, Sandy providing little cover. What was the enemy morale like? Enemy morale was high. Uh, what was the weather and visibility? Weather was clear. Visibility was poor. Uh, the time of day was... I think it's 3.45 to 04.15 hours, 10th of July, 1943. Enemy force was estimated to be uh, 30 Italian riflemen. Uh, so, so that is just really fascinating. Well then, obviously from the uh, award here, uh, well, we can see that that Silver Star was upgraded to a Distinguished Service Cross. And here we have the uh, the citation uh, for not only uh, Spawn's Distinguished Service Cross, but that of uh, Robert Beale and Warren Beamish. And then back here is the citation for George Spawn. And uh, I'm not going to, to read the entire thing, uh, but it says, For Extraordinary Heroism in Action, uh, 10th of July, 1943, during landing operations near Sicily. Uh, and I, I've already read it. Uh, essentially, there was a machine gun that was uh, basically pinning uh, the, the men down. And uh, Lieutenant Spawn and one of the enlisted men moved inland under heavy fire uh, from the emplaced enemy machine gun and forced the surrender of the crew by, deliver, by delivering submachine gun fire and throwing hand grenades. And then several minutes later, he, he basically goes and does the exact same thing again. So, old George Spawn was, uh, was really something else and uh, did a lot to save a lot of men on uh, the, the Sicily landings. 
Here's another document that I wanted to show out of this grouping. These are the separation papers for George Spohn. And here we can see a, a little bit about his service record and learn a little bit more about him. Okay, so he was in Sicily. This is where he is awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. He was also in the Naples campaign, the Rome campaign, and then Southern France. He was also in the Central Europe campaign and the Rhineland. So if you look at where it says decorations and citations, well, he was eligible to wear the European, African, Middle Eastern uh, ribbon with six battle stars and arrowhead, uh, along with the Distinguished Service Cross. Now, if you look right here, this is one of his ribbon bars, and you can see the arrowhead right here that is for uh, denoting an invasion. And then each campaign, uh, you would get a bronze battle star. Well there's only so much room on this this ribbon uh, so if you participated in five campaigns well you would get a silver star uh, not like the award for valor uh, but a, a silver service star and then of course since he was in six well here's five and then he gets another bronze battle star for that sixth campaign this guy was something else Here is another picture of George Spawn, and we don't know exactly where this was taken. Uh, here's one thing that I do know. I, I think that old George uh, might have been a man after my own heart because this guy just brought back souvenirs like it is nobody's business. So here is the center of a uh, of a Nazi flag. Uh, this is called the, the roundel. So some soldiers, you know, if they didn't want to bring back the, the entire flag, well, they would cut this middle section out. Uh, and then again, as Eric already mentioned, you know, here is the P-38 that he brought back. And then also, uh, this is a first model uh, German Luftwaffe dagger. So this is a dagger that like the, somebody in the German Air Force uh, would have would have carried or, or would have had, uh, you know, for their dress uniform. But, you know, whenever we show these items, you know, obviously uh, men like George Spahn were, were fighting against the Nazis. They weren't sympathetic to them, but uh, they, they found these items to be of interest and they brought them home as souvenirs. And, uh, yeah, now, now we get to look at them and, and learn from them and uh, benefit from the, the preservation work of uh, George Spawn. Another interesting thing in this grouping is this map. This is a, this is a map that has um, a bunch of uh, different notations on and, uh, and distances, and this is a, a map overlay. And uh, he saved this for some reason. Now, I don't know if this is the Sicily landing where he got his Distinguished Service Cross or not, but there's some other paper in here, but it's, it's, it's really thin paper, and I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to pull it out. But um, it's, it, he saved it for some reason. I mean, he saved several copies of his Distinguished Service Cross Citation. So I'm thinking this might have something to do with it, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure because there's not enough information on there to tell us. And unfortunately, it's not noted. But I'm very fortunate to have this grouping here. And I, I just wanted to say, you know, if, you, if you're a family and you have a grouping like this or even something smaller, but you just don't know what to do with it you, you, and you want it taken care of, please contact us, you know, info at gettysburgmuseumofhistory.com, you know, send us an email. Um, you know, we, we are interested in obtaining groupings like this so we can keep them together and other people can learn from them.